Hello and welcome, welcome, welcome to the very first Earth Food First podcast. I'm Lindsay Navama. I'm a toddler mama, integrative nutrition coach, cookbook author, and now podcast host. And every Thursday, I'm going to be dishing up actionable, unconventional, sometimes unpopular, and always outside the cereal box ways to help you feed your family the way you really want to, using food as a tool to protect their long-term health. I'm also going to be using some notes because I'm human, this is my first time, and I'm a toddler mom. So at Earth Food First, we're on a mission to reimagine America's kid food culture in a way that protects our children's whole health. That means body, mood, and mind. If you're listening to this, I know you're here for a reason. And I am so excited to be your guide as we hold hands and dive far below the tip of the sugar-coated iceberg that is today's crazy kid food culture. So in this inaugural episode, I'm going to be sharing three things. The personal story behind what inspired me to create Earth Food First, the exact strategies and different norms that I've created to feed my toddler in a way that's protecting her long-term health. And we're going to talk about why every family out there absolutely deserves to better understand the profound effects that the current processed food culture is having on our children's mental and physical health. We're here to shine a light on resolutions that you can adopt to better protect your children's long-term health through the power of earth food. All right, so what exactly is earth food? It's food from a farm or from the oceans, basically any food that does not require an ingredient label. And this is the food that our body knows what to do with when we eat it. It's the food that our body can use as fuel. So time is something every parent wants more of, and it's really meaningful to me when you decide to spend time in this community. So just know that our pledge is you will always walk away with knowledge, inspiration, and the tools that you need to make meaningful changes in your own family food culture. Every week, we're also going to share one lunchbox idea, one of our favorite healthy food swaps, and some silly talk with Miss Stella Vanilla herself, because she wasn't going to let me do a podcast without letting her be on it. All right, so we're going to do a little exercise together. I just want you to pause for a minute. If you're not driving, you can close your eyes, and we're going to take a deep breath, or we're going to, you know what, we're going to take three deep breaths and really regulate our nervous system for a minute, okay? So let's just... And that's two. Do it with me. Don't make it weird for me doing it by myself. <sighs> Feels so good to pause. You know, if you have a toddler or if you have kids, like we don't do it. We, we don't pause. But pausing feels really good and it's really important sometimes. And now I want you to think of something that you used to do just because, like a habit but that you intentionally don't do anymore. Like you paused long enough at some point to realize that that one thing that you used to do was not serving you. It wasn't serving your highest self. Maybe it was like drinking coffee all the time, even though it made you irritable or an unhealthy relationship. How did it feel when you stopped being a victim to the just because living and took control over that one aspect of your life? So for me, whenever I audit and edit these just because sort of norms in my life, I become a captain versus a passenger with the ability to really steer my ship in a positive direction. Now, when it comes to feeding our children, I know that as parents, we don't always feel like captains. And guess what? Totally normal and 100% not your fault. It's this like crazy, weird zeitgeist we're living in that just does not support feeding our kids easily in a way that protects their mental health and their emotional health. But we can change this reality. It's possible. 
by making more intentional and informed choices. And we absolutely can become the captains of how we feed our children. So let's just throw it out there. Why exactly has it become so hard to feed our kids food that truly supports our health? Let's talk about it. Currently, our grocery stores are overflowing with processed products and the companies who make them spend billions of dollars every year marketing so-called kid foods to our kiddos. And these children are naturally attracted to the dino shapes and the artificially color-filled everything and the movie character packaging. And they use this to gain their attention. And meanwhile, us parents, we're just like in the grocery store left to puzzle it out. Oh, can I feed this to my kid? Or is that going to make them become a pediatric statistic? And like, it's a jungle out there. Like, I, I totally get that. I learned that when I had Stella. And that's what I was like, eh, I have to figure out how to navigate this. And sadly, most highly processed foods are literally engineered to completely hijack our taste buds. So what happens when kids are eating this, not once in a while, that's not what I'm talking about, but as say 65 or 75% of their diet, which is the case today for most kids, their taste buds change and they start preferring these high salt, high sugar foods that high packed with bad fats. And that makes them like so excited in their mouth. But then when they taste earth food, they taste, it's just blah and it's bland. And so that's what's happening to our kids. It's not that these corporations are like, we want to make your kids unhealthy. These corporations are like, we want to make money and they will do so at any cost. And so their profits are increasing, but what's happening to the health of our kids in America? It's decreasing. There was a report from the New England Journal of Medicine, um, and I'm going to dive deep into my notes because I want to get this one right, that says the prevalence and severity of obesity is so great, especially in children, that the associated diseases and complications, which are type 2 diabetes, heart disease, kidney failure, and cancer, are likely to start striking people at younger and younger ages, even in childhood, 20s. 30s and 40s. And according to this report, for the first time in two centuries, the current generation of children in America might have a shorter life expectancy than their parents if the rapid, rapid rise in childhood obesity and inflammation isn't reversed. So let's talk for a minute about how we got here. Like what what's going on? How did we land in this really, really special place? So post-World War II, It was like the 1940s, 1950s. It had a really profound effect on food production. So a lot of the food processing innovations that were created for the soldiers found their way into regular civilian life. And additionally, post-war, there was like an economic boom and urbanization. People were moving into cities and there was an increase in the number of women who went into the workforce great, rightly so. Like we do not need to be like domestic goddesses stuck in the kitchen by any means. But this created a demand for convenient food and quick prepared foods. So since then, we've been told and sold this idea that cooking is a super annoying chore and it should be avoided as much as possible. And by the 60s, processed food was cleverly named as convenient food, um, became positioned as this like really great superhero that was freeing women and liberating us from the kitchens and just making life so much easier. And like, that's what everyone believed. And that's what everyone thought. And for a lot of people, we're like, we're needing to rewind and unwind that mentality. Over a few decades, cooking literally went from a super respected and necessary life skill to something that was viewed as regressive or like a symbol of oppression. But guys, please, if you walk away with nothing else, we really need to change the narrative about cooking. For our kids, if we can teach them to cook whole foods for themselves, it is giving them the number one skill that that they can use to protect their long-term health. There is pretty much nothing more important than that, right? So we should look at it like we want to teach them to eat properly and cook 
and read and write and walk and talk, like all, all on the same plane there. So today, most of us, we just run our energy so fast and we're sprinting from thing to thing. And we rarely take time to like stop and take a breath for ourselves, let alone stop to question which cultural norms might be inadvertently harming our children. So I want to share with you the moment that I became the captain of my own ship when it comes to feeding my family and what exactly inspired me as a cookbook author, as an integrative nutrition coach to launch this podcast and this Earth Food First platform. So it was 2019. I was pregnant with Stella and just like buzzing along in life like we all do. And then two things just stopped me right short in my tracks. So first I was diagnosed with a gut health issue and it was causing chronic nasal congestion and bloating from eating like 90% of foods, even vegetables. Um, And besides these symptoms being super annoying, it turns out that when our gut, also known as our gastrointestinal tract, isn't functioning correctly, it can cause chronic inflammation in our bodies, which can over time lead to very serious diseases uh, like heart disease, type 2 diabetes, Alzheimer's, and even some cancers. So, whoa, bro. I was like, well, I don't want any of those. And so my attention, I just like dove down this rabbit hole as far as I could to learn about gut healing and gut imbalances so I could protect my own long-term health, especially now that I was going to be a mom. And I also learned that a mom's gut health can be passed on to her child in utero. And so I really wanted to do everything I could to get back to a place um, where I wasn't inflamed and I had a healthy gut. The second thing that made me take a really intentional pause to think through some of these just because assumptions around feeding children was reading this incredible book called Bringing Up Baby. I was about six months pregnant and it's a really fun, really quick read. um, And it gave me this like mental nutrients that I didn't even know I needed to commit to feeding Stella in a very different way than America's kid food culture would prescribe. So the author is Pamela Druckerman, and she chronicles her life as an American woman in Paris raising her kids and how different cultural norms, especially around around kids eating, had really shifted her beliefs and habits when it came to feeding her own kids. So this just opened my eyes. Um, It just showed me how another culture had introduced foods to their youngest citizens in a very different process than we do here in the U.S. And it made me question pretty much everything uh, just about how we feed our kids here. So when I learned that French families and schools often serve a vegetable first, this was like fascinating to me. Even at breakfast, they're eating a vegetable first at most meals. And because of this book, I adopted the habit of serving veggies first at most meals. And now broccoli for breakfast is super common and normal in our house. Because something I want you to remember is whatever we normalize actually becomes normal. So this book also helped me look at snacking very differently than we do normally here in America. And I was inspired by this French concept called le goûter. And in France, wait for it, there's a national snack time. It's at 4 p.m. And that's when kids have a snack. And so what does limiting snacks do? It makes them actually hungry when they show up at mealtime because they haven't been snacked all day, right? They haven't been um, just like filling up on food. But this also does something, before you write me off as like a heartless momster, that's a mom who's a monster, um, just hear me out around the snacking. Less snacking takes a huge burden off your shoulders of not needing to provide on-the-go snacks all the time, which is brilliant because usually we're reaching for convenient processed foods. So adopting a once a day snack time has absolutely helped Stella show up 
actually hungry at mealtimes. Um, and so my friends will say, how does she sit there for so long? And it's because I haven't been feeding her a ton in between meals. It makes a massive difference. Also, a lot of people don't know that our bodies should go into rest and digest mode between eating sessions. So you kind of need to adopt this idea that it's not always time to eat. And this is so healthy for supporting our gut and the way we digest food. So Stella is now a toddler and I've spent the last three and a half years researching how kids in America are fed and exploring different family food cultures around the globe. So my learnings have led me to adopt and kind of create these new family food norms based on this one goal, which is using food as a means to protect and promote our family's long-term health. All right, so today we're just gonna cover my top four tips for raising veggie lovers. But if you stick with me week by week and meal by meal and bite by bite, I promise we will become the generation of parents who remodeled America's kid food culture. Top four tips for raising veggie lovers. Here we go. Assume they like everything. This is literally literally the opposite of what we do right now. So we live in a culture where we assume young children don't like, like most things. And we have been sold this false narrative that the food you see on kids' menus is what kids like. And so when we give a kid a new vegetable or a food they don't always eat, we kind of do it with trepidation and we assume they won't like it and we're really doubtful and they feel that energy. So try this. Intentionally assume your child will like everything you feed them this week. Use the same language you would if you were serving it to a friend or an adult and you were really excited to share something delicious. See what happens. Second tip. Teach your kids to say, I don't like it today. Not, I don't like mushrooms. I don't like mushrooms. I don't like mushrooms today. This phrase is so helpful when you're trying to get a toddler to repeatedly try something that they sometimes reject. So I explained to Stella that our taste buds change from day to day. And so if she doesn't like something today, she might like it tomorrow, or she might like it when it's prepared um, a different way. And so this simple shift in perspective gives them the ability to express themselves and say, I don't like that. I don't want to eat that. That's fine. Um, but it also gives them and us hope that they might like it soon. So I don't like it today. Tip number three, normalize eating veggies at most meals and usually first. We can't expect our kids to develop an awesome relationship with vegetables if we keep treating them like the strange uncle that we like only invite to dinner because we absolutely have to, okay? Uh, we have to embrace a vegetable forward diet if we want our kids to do the same and reap these lifelong benefits. So we need to celebrate vegetables like we celebrate cupcakes. Like every parent, what do you want? How do you want to feed your kids differently? I want them to eat more vegetables. And then we're like hiding them. Why are we hiding the vegetables? Why aren't we learning how to make them taste delicious and celebrating them and taking our kids on veggie adventures and like doing everything we can to actually help our kids be excited about the foods we want them to eat. Okay, the fourth and final tip, well-dressed is best. What am I talking about? Vegetables. So most adults wouldn't like veggies if they were always served overcooked or always raw with no seasonings and kind of blah and bland. This is always how we serve vegetables to kids, practically always. So of course they don't think they taste delicious because they don't. So I am a firm believer that well-dressed is best in life and with vegetables. So learning how to prepare well-dressed veggies with simple seasonings and simple sauces is an absolute game changer and literally like me handing you a golden key to the vegetable castle and being like, here you go, run wild, and um, I promise you're going to get different results. So I have a um, veggies first guide. It's free. You can download it in the show notes, um, the link. And it has all the recipes you need to understand the basics behind um, creating well-dressed veggies. So if this new list of habits sounds overwhelming or just like too far off the mark from where your 
like family reality is right now, that's fine. You do not need to make these changes all at once. I just want you to like plug it in the back of your mind, like keep this there because it's it's common and reassuring to know that for centuries, people only ate food from the earth. It's like literally the food that came first and it's our natural way and it's um, it's the language our bodies speak, right? And understand the most. Um, and it was really only in the 1950s that people started to consume um, packaged snacks and convenience foods as their main source of nutrients. And so what happened is when we started to eat more and more factory food, and that kind of balance became we eat more factory food, then we eat farm food, both children and adults have seen this massive increase in obesity rates, and children have actually begun to develop these preventable chronic diseases, such as type 2 diabetes, for literally the first time in history. So according to the Search for Diabetes Youth Study from 2001, and like if you're multitasking, just like come on back because this is wild. From 2001 to 2017, the number of people under the age of 20 years old living with type 2 diabetes has increased by, take a guess, what would be like, whoa, 95%. That's not normal. That's weird. Something's going on. So it's supernatural for us to eat food from the earth. We have just been living in this crazy culture that says it's not and doesn't make it easy. And I get it. I am a fellow mom. I'm a fellow human. And change is really challenging, especially amidst the chaos of just like parenthood. Um, But my family didn't do this all at once. We started down this like path of healthier eating, making like these micro changes. And so just remember, it's really important um, as we go on this journey together that you do build your own family food culture at your own pace, because that is what's going to help you see sustainable success. So every day we have a choice, right? We can either feed our kids on autopilot as passengers of a ship that's being steered by these antiquated norms and frankly, processed food corporations, or we can decide we're going to question these norms and educate ourselves and become the captains of our own ship once again. So let's start sailing towards this really vibrant future that we all want for our children by doing two things this week. Thing one, we're going to reimagine cooking. We're going to start looking at it as a critical life skill and something of immense value that we want to teach our children. Thing two, when you go to the grocery store, I just want you to look at your grocery cart at checkout and just notice, kind of take note, what percentage of the food in your cart is from a farm versus a factory. And don't judge. That's not the point of this exercise, right? If you're like, it's all from a factory, that's okay. Totally okay. Just take note and slowly over time, we want to aim to have baskets that are at least three quarters from a farm and maybe just one quarter from a factory. Thank you so, so much for spending time with me today, for listening, for caring, and for deciding to be bold in the face of change. If you appreciated the episode, if you learned something and enjoyed it, it would mean the world if you would follow us, rate us, and review us on whatever platform you listen to your podcast. Also, please feel free to share it with other parents, other humans you love who are also raising our smallest citizens um, so we can protect their health and help them live the amazing lives that they so deserve. If you want more Earth Food First goodness, we are on Instagram at Earth Food First. And don't forget to grab the free Veggies First Guide. The link is in our show notes. So thanks again, and I will see you next Thursday.